Oh damn, everybody! You naming yourself something, Deuce? No, just <laughs> that's how much I got. I got to say about this movie. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Will, Will, you said your your refrigerator got is is gas powered? Yeah, no, it ran out of like, gas. Ran out of gas. I I get it, yeah. But once you realize, <laughs> he just meant that it's dead because it just oh, there's no yeah. there's no more freon. The gas is freon. There's no yeah. more freon pumping out of it, so it, okay. it's done. Yeah, once those happen, the, the can't use it no more. You still got your warranty. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, no, it belonged to the apartment, so they just oh, good, 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 good. I just know the wheels in Dion's head thinking, like, wait, it's powered by gas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, maybe from on his stove, but he said refrigerator. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, I do have a gas stove, though. That was well, good point. Yeah, Not you have to shut the fuck up in the background, though. That, that clickety clack, however, yeah, they're bringing it in the one. We talking about the Flash, and I have to. I'm starting this episode, Will, just because I have to tell the people what's up, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We are talking about the movie The Flash, starring Ezra Miller, who is a them, they, she, I believe, mm-hmm. and then you got Michael Keaton, Ben Affleck. This movie is the only movie that I've been waiting on since the Snyder Cut, all right? This still represents Zack Snyder's Snyderverse. This is the last film, actually, the second to last film in the end of the Snyderverse. The final movie will be Aquaman 2. However, in this film, Ezra Miller, it was supposed to come out two years ago, and it did not, huh? Pun intended. Pun intended. It was supposed to come out two years ago. But it did not because of Ezra Miller's uh, off-screen shenanigans and a couple of uh, reshoots and a couple of different head changes at DC Comics and Warner Brothers for the DC uh, leg of the company. Now, the movie comes out. Before we even get into this movie fully, I'm going to tell you something that nobody's talking about. And that is Jamie Lannister cameo. In the movie. Now, if you've been paying attention, Jamie Lannister has been fan cast as Reverse Flash for the past five years. And we all want to see it. And in this movie, we saw him. If you didn't pick him out, he was the guy who uh, who Barry stole the hot dog from in the beginning of the movie. Oh, okay. I missed that. I told the him. first he he got because he stole food twice. The first yeah. was the hot dog, and the second was the hot dog at the end of the movie with the uh, in front of the courtroom. So oh, we saw Jamie Lannister. That no, was the, the director was at the end. Oh, and he was the cameo at the end. Corner. The first gotcha. cameo at nighttime eating the hot dog was Jamie Lannister, aka fan cast the reverse flash. A successful fan cast has not been pulled off uh until we saw my man in from Fantastic Four in the Doctor Strange 2 movie. Yeah. Now we can begin. Whatever y'all want to talk about. Nobody's talking about it. That's actually a solid Easter egg. Like, I definitely missed that because, like, you know, so, you know, the opening of a movie is supposed to be that opening, like, scene that shows you, like, either the character flexing their powers or is, like, Mm -hmm. foreshadowing the character and their powers. And, bro, outside of Batman in that opening scene, Barry's all, his antics and everything that he did was so fucking corny to me. I hated every bit of that opening scene. Oh what? my god, the baby shower was corny as hell. What? Like, it's just, uh, I did not like it at Wait, all. Wait, baby I shower? You talking about the babies baby, falling? Baby's falling? And that's what he called it. He called it a baby shower. Yeah, see, y'all missed the pun. He yeah. called it the baby yeah. shower. Uh, Alfred, uh, Alfred said that he, it's a baby shower. Yeah. It oh, was, that got it. It was corny as shit to me. I hated that. Like. The Batman scenes, Batman was getting off. And I mean, I said, I'll, I'll, so y'all know where I'm at with this movie as we go. I hate the movie's called The Flash. And the worst part about the movie to me was everything with The Flash. I was, oh, you're on that narcotic. Everything else except Be- Barry Allen, Ezra Miller, all that shit. I hated it all. So this is, yeah. I, this is the but, energy I'm giving y'all this whole episode. Here's the question I got to ask though. Do we not real like realize the Flash is corny? No, he's not. not he no. is. No, he, he, most he, in mo- no, hold the, on. The, in the most Flash, 
the Flash in every iteration of the Flash. Does he has quips? Yes. Is is, is he's he's taken serious, but he is trying to be like he's trying to be the ladies man, but he's not corny to the point where he's the butt of the jokes. He's not corny to the point where he's considered the pickup man or the garbage man for the Justice League. And I think the issue that I have with this Flash is that they wanted to make this Flash what Tom Holland Spider-Man is to the MCU. There's so many younger characters that deserve that role that Barry Allen shouldn't have been that. They shouldn't have made a younger Barry Allen to everybody else's. And that's so, what I okay. hate about it. So, so can I ask this then? What, Bear, what version of Barry Allen would you have preferred to tell this story? Like, where did Barry Allen need to be at in his, like, timeline as The Flash? So again, I'm indifferent because I never liked it, this iteration of the Flash in general. This whole from Justice League to now, I never liked how Ezra Miller portrayed Barry wow. Allen in the Flash. That's always been my issue. Nothing Hold on a against second. his acting because I'm about to kill this nigga. For this role, I don't. I'm, like. sending the, I'm sending a hit out to Milwaukee as he was talking. <laughs> it's about to be a knock on your door in two seconds. Hey, I've been vocal about this everywhere. <laughs> Hold on, before you say that, CT, let me say what you've been vocal about. Who's this? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today yeah. we're counting down. And look at when you look at that list. What's all on that list? Grant Gustin and animation. You know why? Yeah. Ezra Miller is the best of the Flash, y'all. I want oh, to tell you about how great I love the Flash. flash. Is. So here's the thing: I <laughs> love the Flash. The, the Flash is my <laughs> second favorite character in DC. I Wait a second. Allen Hold on. Can, 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 can we Why pause everything though? Can we pause everything though? Because no, yeah. I remember last episode, somebody really got on us about our mics and then got the audacity to come in here today and sound like you in a church theater. <laughs> and if you think I was not going to pass that up after what you just did, <laughs> who my, the fuck are you? <laughs> my my core is not. The, the thing to hook up with my, my laptop. Do you got your dongle? You don't have your dongle? Ain't that what they call? You in your studio. Is there <laughs> not another mic that you can hook up to your... So if I booked the studio today for doing this show for, for where you are... Oh, oh, I'm not even gonna hold you. This is a brand new laptop. I know y'all been uh -huh. with my laptop. So this is a... I'm talking about like a week old. So I Congratulations, know, Light yeah, Flex. I didn't know it was a, it had the, the contraption to hook up to it. So I Here's the thing. We got to tell the entire story because what Dion just did is something that I applaud. However, the audience needs to know the tidbit of information. Our own Young Deuces is the voice of Watch Mojo. Actually, the first black man in history to be a part of Watch Mojo, let alone the voice of of Watch Mojo doing this countdown of the Flash's greatest moment, <laughs> <laughs> which is incredible irony for this episode. Yes. Uh, beyond that, I will give some validity to what Young Deuces said a while ago, which was that this version of Barry Allen doing the quips, Flash has never been corny. I will give you that. He's never been corny. However, this iteration of Barry Allen since he's been seen in uh, what was his first appearance? Was his first appearance Justice League or was it? Oh, it may have been because remember that Easter egg where Bruce yeah, but he didn't talk. He didn't yeah. talk in uh, like Suicide Batman Squad. for Superman. Yeah. Suicide Squad was kind of like his first appearance, I think. Hmm? No, 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 Justice League came no because they did show Flash. That was his first, but that was even a, a quick shot yeah. when they yeah. showed um, him taking down Captain Boomerang. Yeah, he didn't talk. However. Our first seeing him in Justice League, this iteration of Barry Allen was extremely close to Wally West. Yeah. Extremely. And when you see the Justice League cartoon, Justice League Unlimited, um, this was more like Wally than it was Barry Allen. Because even me as a Flash fan, Flash has always been my number three. So it was Batman, Superman, Flash, then John Stewart's Green Lantern, then Static Shock. So when you look at all of these versions of The Flash, the Barry Allen from the television show caught me off guard because I was so used to Michael Rosenbaum voicing The Flash, which, first of all, round of applause for Michael Rosenbaum, dude. One of the greatest, if not the greatest portrayal of Wally West oh my we've God. seen, we've yeah. been even privy to. Now, with that said, this version of Barry Allen was, yes, more cartoony, more silly, more neurotic, all of those things. 
And I will give you that he's been that with the opposition, Young Deuces. This movie, this script was incredible with everything that they had to cut out because of the new direction that DC is going with now with gun, a part of the helm mm -hmm. for the things that they cut out, which I can't wait. And so they dropped the director's cut and I hope they drop everything that they cut out because they yeah. cut out so much, but this movie was phenomenal. The flash got so much to show in this movie, but you got to remember even though it's a part of the Snyderverse, we're looking at this as the Flash's origin story, which it was not. This was just a movie about the Flash and Flashpoint. So this was to reset the universe. This was not a solo film. So by them showing what they showed us with the Flash, we got a chance to see him knowing everything with his powers, the phasing, the super speed. The only thing he learned in this movie was that he could go back in time. Right. Mm -hmm. So they also reconstructed him because he lost his powers and now had to teach his past self how to use all the powers that he's come along to learn. Even with the suit, he's like, look, you're going over you going to overheat. You got to distribute this electricity differently. This is stuff that he's learned from being a hero for years. So this movie was phenomenal before we even get to the uh, the guest stars in the film from a flash perspective best work it was way better than the tv show i promise you that so here's my rebuttal to that because I, like i agree with you and i think that i think my issue is the portrayal versus the technicality of it right because mm -hmm. from an acting standpoint as a fan of acting and and script writing and everything like 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 i said i can acknowledge everything that you said you know as an actor what ezra miller had to do practically having to act as one character and act as another character because i can't say both berries did feel like different versions of berry right absolutely so acknowledge that and again like you said with the storytelling with them script rewriting like what they had with them i can acknowledge that again but it comes down to I really do not like this portrayal of Barry. So like exactly what you said is this from the get go, even when, when he was in justice league and Batman versus Superman, when I first saw this Ezra Miller version of it, I said, I don't like this portrayal of Barry. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, I was already against it. So then, you know, when all the, all the uh, critics were saying, Oh, this is the best move. Like I was going in expecting for me to be proven wrong. That's what I, that, and so when I wasn't proven wrong, I really doubled down on it. Like, I don't see what everybody was seeing in this film. So take out the portrayal because that's your number one gripe. Your portrayal is a character choice. Mm -hmm. If you take out the character choice that you don't like of his Barry Allen, and we just look at this film and we look at the scenes and we look at the direction and we look at the special effects and we look at everything that was tied in, you're saying that you didn't like this movie. I, because so the the two key elements there's the two key elements of it outside of like the portrayal that I don't like and everything mm -hmm. is um the ending of this movie I don't want to jump too ahead but I feel like the lesson wasn't learned 100% and the second thing is that everybody else's story I was way more invested and for this to be the flash movie you should not be third or fourth that I'm interested in and so because of those like I I just I can't like this movie how now without, of course, we're going to get to the ending at some point, but without giving away the ending, how can you say he didn't learn his lesson when there was again. no, 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 no. At the end of the film before the courthouse, he yeah. literally learned his lesson. No, no he's, because he's still, the whole movie started off on the top shelf. Yeah. Yes. He did not interact. He did not change the interactions to where his mother would be killed. Or not, I mean, uh, to be saved. He moved the cans, which meant that he knew this is because I literally looked at it uh, again last night so I could be ready for today. Right. He moved the cans. The original yeah. time he went back in time, let's just, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. The original time he went back in time, mm -hmm. he wanted to give his mother the extra can of tomatoes so she did not die. Right. Now, right. by her doing that, she got a chance to live this full life in this timeline. However, there an in, it created an inevitable point. Yeah. I mean, an, yeah, inevitable point. This inevitable point means that although she didn't die, now the point is going to be this universe dying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Him interacting with his mother, giving her the can, changed everything, destroyed that universe. By him going back the second time, which I'm only going from the can of tomatoes in the grocery store to the very end. Him going back the second time, he said, damn, 
I got to take this can of tomatoes out of her basket because I've accepted that she has to die. True. However, true. I know that Bruce Wayne can give me the technology that exists in my present day that right. came in my present day to help the camera angle show my father's innocence. That had no effect no, on I, the past 20 years. Yeah, I'm not but saying it, that I'm not saying it's the same level of impact, but if the whole movie is the lesson of don't go back in time and messing with shit, even if that's small, it's like you went back in time and you still messed with still, shit. Yeah, he still didn't learn his lesson because he still changed something, and we don't know what and we saw what the ripple effects was of him moving the can, which is what we saw at the end. Right. Now, if we go, let's go through the movie before we, because uh, yeah. we got to tell the movie before we keep jumping around. <laughs> Barry Allen uh, is torn up about his father being in prison. He gets uh, a video piece of evidence of his father being in the grocery store that fateful day yep. of his mother dying to try and prove his father's innocence. But the security video is extremely laggy and it's choppy, and there's no way to prove his innocence. Barry Allen is shown. Um, is shown this evidence while having I can't even talk about that relationship with this yeah. Iris West in this film. Yeah. And while they're having a the conversation, Barry then gets it in his head. Wait a minute. I could go back because he accidentally went back in time a day. Yeah, and by him going cool. back in time a day, go ahead, Deuces. I was going to say, because I don't want to, uh, before you go past that part, yeah. um, the relationship between him and his dad, I thought that they did that masterfully. Yes. I did like that relationship. It felt like what I was used to, um, you know, and, you know, even with the way, you know, um, also prior to that, when he was the, I always like how DC has shown, like when fast people go across count, like state lines and country mm -hmm. lines, they did that in Man of Steel, the way that they did that in the flash with him running and how they're like, I thought that the way that they did those transitions, I did like those a lot. I'm glad you gave us some props. Uh, looking at that, the relationship, and I wanted because I want y'all to notice something as Deuces talks about this movie for the rest of this this episode. You are relating your feelings from the TV show to the film, and you're comparing as opposed to taking it as what it is, which I understand. The first three seasons of The Flash were the greatest, and we all fell in love with Grant Gustin's portrayal for those couple of seasons. And for all intents and purposes, he's been The Flash for the past decade. Yeah. And it's very hard to see somebody else in that role, just like we saw Tom Welling as Clark Kent, and then we saw Brandon Routh as mm -hmm. Clark Kent. And you're like, ah. But mm -hmm. by the time Henry Cavill came around, Smallville had been off the air for a couple of years. Yeah. And you're like, you know what? If I have to accept this, I will. Whereas now, only a month ago, we just said goodbye to Grant Gustin. So we're right. all attached. And that's another reason that he's a completely different Flash than, I mean, a completely different Barry Allen than the one yeah. that we've seen for the past decade, which is understandable. Yeah. But in this film, I did not have any comparisons except one. And that was the portrayal of Iris West. And I don't, I, and this is another reason I want to see the director's cut, because I feel that there had to have been some better scenes for the young lady who played Iris West in this film because she did not come across uh, as a love interest. She didn't come across as genuinely having chemistry with Ezra. She didn't come across as an important character whatsoever. And a lot of her dialogue seemed rushed. It seemed like they used the first takes of everybody's day when they had Iris on the, on the movie. Yeah. You know, it also, too, it seemed like the scene she had was what they shot from the Justice League, uh -huh. and then they transferred it over here. That's what it more felt like. Except him saving her. Yeah, except that part. And it was just like, but that's what it felt like when seeing that, seeing her talk, it felt like the saving part was right there, and then it was like, oh, okay. After that, she saw Barry and then started wanting to have this conversation. It felt like y'all just kind of broke them pieces up and gave that to us for her yeah. because y'all didn't want us to fully focus on the Iris thing. But you could have yeah. did better with some of her scenes to establish like, hey, this is this person's love interest, not just some funky, you know, you know, round the way reporter <laughs> that not he just used to go about night with. Yeah, that he just like, just happened to be asking about his story. And it was too forced. That, that, her, her appearance in this movie and I wanted to see her portrayal because I wanted to say, oh man, all right, is Candace really the best Iris? Let's see what happens. And in this movie, 
this movie felt like, first of all, it's the greatest movie that we've had since the Snyder Cut. And before the Snyder Cut, it's the best movie since Man of Steel. But this movie felt as though if you didn't watch every single piece of video from the Snyderverse, you weren't going to be caught up. Now, there were some people in the theater that had not seen any Snyder stuff and was like, oh, this is amazing. And I agree. But when it comes to Iris West, eh, they shoehorned her a lot. I got a question. I correct, correct me if I'm wrong. The Iris saving scene, y'all did that. That was just the Snyder one. That, like that wasn't the the original cut. That was the Snyder cut that only had that saving part, right? Well, the mm -hmm. Snyder cut, I believe the Snyder cut had it. However, what I'm talking about, the saving scene was in the trailer for oh, Justice League. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So yeah, when they yeah. showed it in the trailer, you're like, oh, great. And then when the movie came out, they never showed that scene. As a matter of fact, yeah, Iris no. was cut out of that as well. Yeah. And so she's not, been a victim Snyder, of it. You see the, yeah. You see the full extended version of it. Yeah. So it's like you're expecting us to have seen the Snyder cut to be able to care about her in this movie. And you're expecting us also to have watched the television show to see who Iris is to Barry for us yeah. to be like, oh, here she is, as yeah. opposed to giving us the right. origin of why he likes her, mm -hmm. why she likes him, what have been, what's been their adversity, because the true story of Iris West and Barry Allen from the 50s is that they have this love that's almost like love at first sight. But yeah, you can't yeah. do that in a modern age movie nowadays when you've had a TV show showing that and people don't know the original story. But even to your point, too, like how you said, that's where they missed it because... You didn't even give us that. Like, even you try to throw, like, yo, they went to college together. And it's like, that's not what this feel like. Like, they feel like they don't know each other. Yes. Like, yeah. This is their first time really meeting. And then and she's hella forward if that's their first time. <laughs> yeah. Like, you came to this dude's house and shit. Like I can know where you live, baby girl. Right. This is yeah, wow. I'm like, yo, this, this, this version part is a lot. But then, too, just as you're saying, like, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Just that cleared up a little bit more once he got back to his different point in time with this other Barry and stuff. But I, but what I'll say that when we get to that, because it also ties into what y'all said in the beginning part too. So just go ahead and keep like guiding us through the movie. Yeah. And they, they definitely did not need the love interest at all because not at one point during the movie, did he say, I got to get back to Iris. Well, he just kept I saying, I got to get back to my yeah. timeline as opposed to like, if you'd have told me, Oh man, I got to get back because I got a date in my timeline too. Yeah. Then yeah. it would have made sense. Cause it's like, all right, he got to fix this so he could get back to his Iris. But none of that was set up. Um, I, from they, I was wondering, what I think they was trying to put to pull off. And again, because they didn't set it up, it didn't hit mm -hmm. um, younger Barry. I think that that was like, Older, but older Barry, his purpose of wanting to save this timeline outside of just wanting to save people, I believe that they was trying to pull off like, oh shit, in this world, Iris and Barry actually get together. They go on a date, so I need to preserve this. And I feel like, like you said, being that they did not set it up, that's why it didn't pay off. I think that that's well, what they're attempting to do. Well, to your point, though, I think they threw a little, like, into, into CTs, they threw a little more too much trust into it. Like, I think what it was was showing the opportunity missed. Yeah. So the version we know didn't ask her out, and we see how that turns out to where it's now this whole, ah, they don't really know each other, but they know each other and stuff. And it's like, okay, this is what happens when you don't shoot your shot, as opposed to the old, younger Barry that shot his shot, and it's going to show us what that whole Iris love connection yeah. is. But to CT's point, if I don't know who Iris <laughs> right. is, I don't know. I did not know that's what you were aiming for. And even more so, when you look at that and you see that kind of relationship, this movie was about, and this is fine, and this is why the movie should have came out sooner. This movie should have came out last month and it would have made 200 million easily. And I'm going to tell you why. This movie was the focus, and this is a root of Barry Allen, the focus on the, the love between a son and his mother. Yep. Right? Yes. So if you to drop this on Mother's Day, 200 million easily because you got to change that narrative. Don't yep. tell me you're changing this. Don't tell me you're doing this movie because, oh, it's about the multiverse and multiverse is big right now. Marvel, DC. No. If you tell me this is about a boy who loves his mother and I cried at the end of the movie, teared because of what I saw. If you show that you're going to win as opposed to trying to shoehorn this love story that is not going to pay off at any point. Um, so if you tell me about his mother. All right. So he goes back in time because 
for those of you guys who don't know, the Flash became. Go ahead. Hold on, but, but, but because I know you're going forward in the story, you know what they could have done of that instead of showing Iris, that cameo could have been Lois Lane. Why? Lois Lane could have been covering that story and just asking him about it because that's more of what they did with Iris was ask him <laughs> about his father and show us the. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. saying. The journalism yeah. aspect. Yeah, yeah. we just okay. or, or to just a random Ricky Dink journalist. It didn't need yeah. to be Iris. I would have preferred a random journalist. I'm gonna tell you why I don't. I'm glad it wasn't Lois Lane. It's because one, the Lois Lane in the Snyderverse was trash. Yeah. She was not Lois Lane. The greatest Lois Lane has always been and will always be Erica Durant until they book Miss Maisel to play Lois Lane. Now, second is Terry Hatcher. Okay, well, nobody Terry Hatcher that. is definitely a number two. Definitely. Woo! But you know who is the last place? Margot Kidder. And I don't know what the fuck <laughs> they were thinking in the 70s. Steph Cass, Margot, smoke a voice, Kidder. Yeah. As and Lois Lane. Like, heavy yo. emphasis on, on, on a lot of Superman in here. Like it would have definitely took away like so much. <laughs> and you gotta remember, outside of her being a bad Lois Lane in the Snyderverse, um, that would have been still showing Cavill and that super, I mean, that uh Lois Lane, which is what they're trying to get rid of yeah, for yeah. the new movie coming in two years. So um he goes back in time to try to save his mother by changing the one detail, which is, oh, you are missing a can of tomato sauce. Let me get an extra can. And by him doing that, he's now created a separate timeline where his mother lived and he's had a full life with both of his parents and his dad did not get arrested. But if you go ahead, I have to, I have to ask something too, because you say you just saw it. So yeah, I saw it again last night. There's a detail I need. If you could clear this up for me. Yeah. What can did she tell him to get did a green say, can? Okay, so it wasn't a red can. What it was not a red can. I looked at that each time. Yeah, I, I was, was like, like, why does he keep get what? Why if they're gonna write that into the script, right. why is there not a green can of tomato sauce? They keep being <laughs> these fucking and I thought, red I can. Got it wrong. I can't, yeah, at first I thought he got it wrong, and I'm like, nah. oh, that may have something to do with it because he yeah. got the wrong color can. But nah. I'm like. Okay, well, maybe I heard the wrong color. That was bad <laughs> continuity. That because yeah, they like, wrote I that shit in the script. He got the wrong can when he grabbed yeah. it. I'm like, why put so much emphasis on this can? Are you grabbing the wrong can? I felt you with the same thing. So, uh, for those of you guys who don't know the history of the Flash, the Flash, uh, he was a little boy, extremely close to his mother in every single version of the Flash, and his mother. They've changed the reasons of why she's been murdered, but his mother's always murdered, whether it be. This is the first time I've ever seen her cooking something and the husband was supposed to go to the store and get something to help her cook. He's out of the house. He comes back in time to where it's plausible enough to believe that the father killed the mother and the father goes to prison and they've been trying to prove his innocence for 20 something years. Barry goes to uh, goes. He becomes a, a CSI, not a CSI. Forensic scientist. A forensic scientist to try to help reverse cases of people who did not really look at DNA evidence or be able to find more stuff from a scene because he's always motivated to help get his father out of prison unsuccessfully, even as he becomes the Flash. In other iterations, um, Barry's father was not around and Barry and his mother were just like going around hanging out and then some man either burglarized or terrorized the house and kills his mother. This sends him down a path similar to Batman, except he can't do anything about it. And while he is a forensic scientist working in his lab late at night, a rainy day, a lightning bolt comes through his lab and strikes him by lightning. In other version, in other versions of the Flash, that lightning bolt is the Flash from future timelines going back to give himself the power. So it's all a full circle in this movie. Barry's father goes to get the tomato sauce. He comes back home just at enough time for the reverse, uh, the reverse flash who was not seen on camera to kill Barry's mother. Barry sees his father over his mother as there's a knife in her chest. Barry's father tries to get the knife out. So his fingerprints are on a knife. Who's going to believe that he didn't do this? The only witness is dead. And uh, Barry's father goes to prison for life. Barry grows up, becomes his forensic scientist, blah, blah, blah. What happened in this movie was Barry relives the memory of the day his mother died and he's already the flash through his pain and suffering. He starts to run to try and get his mind off of it. But in his stupor, he runs too fast 
And in him running too fast, he goes back in time 24 hours. He goes back in time 24 hours, notices that he can now go back in time, tells his only friend, which is Bruce Wayne. And in this timeline, that Bruce Wayne is Ben Affleck. And he tells Ben Affleck that he can go back in time and he wants to go back because this time he can save his mother and he can save Bruce's parents. Bruce warns him not to do it because our scars are what make us who we are. Which is a, which is I love that line so much. Like mm -hmm. that that should have been the promo tag. It like was. you could do so much with that tag. Mm -hmm. Like oh, especially with the with the focus on like mental health now and everything. Oh, true. Like, there is so much they could have done with that tag. But wait, CT, I wanted to know for you, being a Barry Allen fan as well. And I know I'm more of a Wally West actress. guy, but I definitely love Barry Allen. Oh yeah, well I know it's more so the actress, but did Nora Allen's accent threw you off? Here's the thing: did not expect him to make the Flash half Mexican. Let's just start there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, I'm glad we stopped there. I was like, yeah, we, we, we got some stuff we got to bring back. I'll say, my man, Spanish. Now, here's the first Spanish of all: shout out to my Latinos and all around the world. You know, I got nothing but love for y'all. Right. Had no. That's another thing. Like, here's the thing, bro. If you're going to sell a movie, first of all, if you don't know anything about minorities, Hollywood execs, I need you to know this. Don't nobody support a movie like black people and Latinos. Know right. that, number one. Know it. <laughs> if you would have advertised that this version of The Flash was white and Mexican, he might have been all Mexican because it's the, the way his daddy looked at the beginning of the movie. Right. Yeah, curly hair. And the, and the perfect scene you could have had as a clip was them dancing with each other. My the God. Picture. In if the you kitchen. have shown that, because like I was very taken back when I saw she was Hispanic. I was like, oh. "I'm not mad at this." Yeah. this I wasn't is, mad either. I, like I wasn't that. mad. It just took me aback. I was like, I mean, and my brother was like, but, "Did you, my brother was like, is this origin like that?" I was like, "I don't think so." I was like, "His name is Barry Allen from Central City." Yeah, I was like, <laughs> not Barito, <laughs> Bartholomew, <laughs> Bartholomew. But yeah. to CT's point, though. That's one of those things you should have definitely promoted out because yeah. of the fact, and, and, and you know, too, I know it's a very small change, but it is something that was like, wow, it's major, I, yeah. I and I like it, it was a good major kind of change. Listen, man, they're problem. showing trailers for the Blue Beetle, and everybody in the world knows. And if you don't know, I'm telling you right now, Jaime Reyes is the first Latino superhero in the DC universe. So if you would have shown and and let me tell you something, Latinos all around the world already ready for Blue Beetle. They probably bought the goddamn tickets. So if you telling me the Flash, <laughs> who is one of the most famous superheroes on the planet, yeah. if you were making him Latino and you did not tell the world, shame on your marketing department, because that's mm -hmm. a bonus $400 million that you just did not get and because you could have told people. Himself. Huh? <laughs> because of the writer's strike, we ain't seen Ezra, Ezra Miller promote one time. Well, Ezra Miller spoke, he to. He spoke. He at did. the premiere, and he only said, I want to thank DC and Warner Brothers <laughs> Nobody's interviewing yeah, like, him. for he their patience. Him. Nah, you can't say shit. You know, like, can't yo, say nothing. David said that's the only premiere he could go to. He couldn't go to nothing else. Yeah. But I bet that. you that I bet you that 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 whatever what he said, that went through so many hands. So many people like I just double check, make sure that nothing can come back around. Yeah. Nothing can turn around on us. And that's yeah. unfortunate because it's like that, if nothing else. That goes to show you the damage that can be done when the star of a film can't promote it. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, Michael Keaton went around trying to promote, but at the same time, he can't say everything about this movie. The only person who could have promoted this movie is the person who plays the hero mm -hmm. and the villain. <laughs> Michael Shannon couldn't say nothing. He was there for two minutes. Who promoted right. this movie? Who promoted it? Michael Keaton was the only person that nope. I saw. Michael, was, Michael Keaton was Man, it was all he said it, was, it was good to be Batman again. It was and that's all he and, and again too. That's all he really was supposed to do because it's your ending. Like if you know the story, we'll get into like you know uh, further into the movie. But like for you, this is your like. I'm just saying, I was glad to be back here, do my cameo. Yeah. I'm good. To CT's point, like you only have the Flash who can promote this like that. You don't yeah. have a side character. The only other person is Supergirl. And don't nobody know who the fuck she is. So she making her debut in this movie. Yeah, right. you're not gonna get as much pool with that because we don't know if this is her first and last appearance. We got a lot to talk about. Let me let me yeah. get through the rest of the movie. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, who the fuck? Uh, Brody. <laughs> Why is Brody's internet never together? 
Was it's the same footage it. that we saw uh, Barry Allen's dad on. That's what. That's the same type of internet that Brody uses. <laughs> that is a fact. And you petty as fuck for making us listen to that. Because I was like, oh, maybe he's going to say something nice about Brody. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Dika? Y'all done changed me. Listen here. I got I to gotta be quick with it. Yeah. <laughs> is, so what's worse because um, of the Flash and the Rider Strike, Stephen Colbert, Seth Meyers, none of these shows can promote any actors to come on shows because all these people are writers. So all these shows oh, are- could, yeah. could, premiere, could premiere trailers before it be like as a special exclusive. Right. Even. Oh, I didn't even yeah. think didn't about even that. Think about that so nobody promoting pre- these shows. They yeah, only promote all- like uh, I, I haven't seen any actor promote like on a podcast. Only- only one was Supergirl, like the press junket scene, like comic book IGN. Yeah. It was her doing most of the interviews. And you know what's wild? Like, you could remove her from that entire movie. That movie wouldn't change at all. It no, wouldn't. it wouldn't. It would not have. <laughs> it would so, not you know have. What, you know what? The promo that they actually like the only promo that I saw was literally it was critics. It was other directors yeah. saying like this is the greatest Tom movie. Cruise. Like I didn't. Yep. It was just uh, outside people bigging it up, yeah. but nobody involved with the film. That is crazy. So yeah. when you okay, so where did I leave off? He goes back in time. He changes things. His mother's still alive. He comes in contact. First of all, how old was the Barry Allen that we know that went back in time? Great I was I'm assuming seventeen because they wasn't he a friend? No, no, no. In no, 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 no. Not the young one. The one that went the back. Older oh, one. The older one. Older one. Ooh. They never yeah, said because we don't yeah. know how old Barry is by he the events mid- after Justice League. He got to be mid twenties or late twenties if you went to forensic science because that's at least a four year bid. Well, here's thing. the thing: the Barry Allen that I know, Barry Allen is supposed to be twenty seven years old after he gets hit by lightning and all of that stuff. But the way that they, I'm sorry, he's twenty seven when he becomes the Flash. In this film, he goes back and he runs into his eighteen year old self. Go ahead. He was 26 in Justice League, so they're assuming that this is he's around his 30s in this movie. Impossible. If he was 26 in Justice League, don't look at real lifetime. Look at the storyline time. Uh, well, well, let me see. This, this is you get what I'm saying. Movie, this like Justice League Snyderverse was 20. They came out in 2017, right, or 2018. When did Justice League come out? Okay, hold on. Wait, hold on. Because now they're giving me a conflicting one. Because it says that the well, give me the year and I'll tell you the truth. Oh, the move the movie that Justice League came out? Yeah, not Snyderverse. I mean, not the Snyder Cut, the Justice League movie. I think 2017. Yeah, 2017. Okay. If Justice League came out in 2017, the Flash was supposed to come out in 2019. They start pushing things back. So it was supposed to be two years after the events of Justice League. Then that meant that Barry was supposed to be 29 years old. So if he's 29 years old, then almost 30 is fine. So that meant that he went back 12 years yeah. to talk to his younger self. So he goes back to talk to the 18-year-old uh, Barry Allen, not expecting to see himself because he thought that he was going to be in his timeline. But what happened while he was inside of the Speed Force going back in time, he was knocked out by a mysterious villain. The <laughs> mysterious villain. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the way he came, he like I was like, hey, that nigga about to knock him out. <laughs> Yo, we also are coming, except the flash. How the fuck are you a hero and don't see a punch coming? So so Barry gets knocked into this uh into this alternate timeline where he runs into the 18 year old him and he realizes that that is the day that he gets hit by lightning. He has to get his younger self to the uh to the police station so he can get hit by lightning and become the flash on his timeline while him saving the details while he is preparing his younger self to get hit by lightning he has a lightning bolt go through himself to his younger self which causes him to lose his powers so 30 year old barry loses his own powers and yeah. younger barry gets his powers and, With his this, and he loses his tooth with this happening, now older Barry must train younger Barry on how to become the Flash that he's come to be already. Except younger Barry is miles ahead of older Barry with everything he's learned to do as the Flash. Yeah. And with that, that's a huge consequence because younger Barry did not have to work at all 
to understand his powers. And when people don't work, this is a message in life. When you don't work to earn things, you don't appreciate them. And when you don't appreciate them, you throw caution to the wind. And when you throw caution to the wind, things become extremely dangerous. I digress. CC with the sermon. I hear you, with bro. The sermon. I'm out here. You understand me? Amen. <laughs> Amen. So what ends up happening is because of this alternate timeline, we learn once both berries end up going to Bruce Wayne, who is now Michael Keaton in this timeline, which is our Michael Keaton from 1989. He learns that time is not linear. And every time you mess with time, it does not create a separate timeline. It creates spaghetti. Yeah, <laughs> Spaghetti can sometimes run parallel, but a lot of times it runs concurrent and a lot of times it's in a loop, but it's all a huge hot mess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, learning that this is the, first of all, to take a break from this, it's so interesting hearing everybody's theory on how time travel works. Like when you see Marvel do it in Endgame, how they say how time works, and then how you see in DC how this works, and then the Back to the Future, it's clear that nobody knows what the fuck they're talking about, and they're just manipulating time. I feel like everybody's, I, I don't know when the science community like made this decision, but it does seem like everybody is doing a, a good job on shitting on the rules that Back to the Future set. Like, yes. I know y'all probably yeah. seen a movie. Everybody always like, yo, Everybody. see the movie. No, it's not that. <laughs> Which, by the way, while they're in this timeline, they even <laughs> make knowledge to Back to the Future. And they said, oh, like Back to the Future. Yeah, Eric Stoltz is great. Because in this timeline, Michael yeah. J. Fox did not play Marty McFly. You know Eric what? Stoltz did the and trilogy. People, I'm, a lot of people don't know that story which i'm surprised right. that like, you know what this bothers me because he didn't go that far back man like because how did the batman change how did back to the future change because if you went back like 60 years back that would change like the fact that he was you know what i'm saying like but you you gotta remember time ain't linear so whatever it changed he changed that point in that time but so there's no telling what and, happened for it listen, to get listen, to him to change years back Bruce Wayne's origin story. <laughs> he is a child. You know what I'm saying? So, for, so how a different man get altered because of what Barry did 12 years ago? You know what I'm saying? Well, that's the reason that they explain the spaghetti. Yeah. So, in your mind, you think because you go from A, if you in the alphabet line, let's say A to Z, you think if you go from P back to C, how did that A, a and B won't change. Right. But in actuality, you going back to C creates a separate timeline here that intersects with your timelines A and B. Oh. So you're at C2 right Exactly. Now. That's, where That's what they were trying to explain. Right. So while that happened, um, Barry is talking to this Bruce Wayne because he realizes in this timeline, there is no Wonder Woman. There is no uh, Cyborg because Cyborg has not become Cyborg yet. He realizes that there is no Aquaman. The only person on this planet is Batman and possibly Superman. So he tries to convince our Michael Keaton Batman to help him free Superman from the Soviets. And they go and they try to find Superman, but they instead come across Kara zor who is Supergirl, mm -hmm. which means that Superman came to this planet, but we don't know where he is. Hopefully, in my mind, I was like, well, maybe this is going to be Soviet Superman. Maybe this is going to be the Russians got him since Kara no. zor is captured, right? <laughs> Wait, and before, you, before you move on that too, uh, her... She whooped those guards' ass. I wanted to say that. Yeah. If I was the third guard, after I saw her fling the second guard, I would have laid down my gun. Yeah. Like, you know what? You got it. I'm like, Bro, I can't. I don't Whoop. see how faceless goons don't quit. I would have quit. <laughs> no faceless goons. I would have quit so quickly, yeah. dog. She came out and beat they ass on top yeah. of that facility. Yeah. Like, oh. When well, yeah. you notice the guns don't work no more, that's when you leave. It's like, <laughs> hey, I quit. I quit. I know I shot her. That's <laughs> right. Like I, I know I shot her in the face, and she yeah. just looked at me like I'm done. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sorry I about mean, that. I just had to say that. A, you know they they always clown Man and Steel for the amount of deaths that happened. Mm -hmm. Like they killed a lot of people. Granted, well, like they they make it seem like Barry Allen saved a lot of people in that that falling building. He he saved the babies. But I, I would say at least a half. Hey, it, I also didn't think the you, you on mute, Will. Will, you on mute. You on mute, bro. I said we know there were 10 more floors on that wing where they, they were <laughs> yeah. in that building. Bro, I, I didn't everybody get out. I yeah. don't hold you. 
I thought that they was going to let the babies drop. I was like, yo, is DC about to yo, take it there? Man, they dark like, enough. They going yo. that dark? I said, yo, this is about to be a so different movie. Here's, here's my only um, issue with the movie. They, they, they emphasize in Justice League how important the carb overload is for Barry Allen to eat, eat, eat carbs, carbs, carbs. Mm. And then at the, the third act, they were like, fuck that. <laughs> it's like, that's like, that's not even important no more. Because them niggas was moving. They went back in time like 13 times. I was like, yeah, and he did not get tired either. Like, they, like even in that fight with like Zod, like, yo, yeah. like, why? And then why didn't Barry power out like that? So it was like, so did younger Barry learn like to not need that anymore? Yeah. Because we never seen him really get tired or sleepy when he got his powers. Right. The only reason that didn't bother me is that in every iteration of the Flash, they always have a moment where they emphasize his metabolism. Mm -hmm. But for the long haul, whether it's animation, live action, no matter what, it's never a heavy focus. So I didn't expect that to carry on 100% because they never do that in any iteration of the I, Flash. I definitely I appreciate it in the beginning when you thought he was planning out how to save these babies. He's like, nah. Let me get to this vending machine first. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, this, they had some. They had some decent comedy moments in yeah, this, said, in this nah, movie. Let me go and make this burrito in this movie. And yeah. you know, I know we're at the part where, where he's he's uh you know enrolling Keaton's help and his uh, his guidance. Another issue issue that I had with this movie is that, bro. They had no faith in this movie. Every big moment, it will well, not every, but most of the big moments that would have got us. Because you got to think, even when when they introduced Keaton's Batman, like it, it took a while for them to reveal it. So you know that they was waiting for the reveal. And when his face showed, even in when his face showed, like it was a little pause. Like you, they probably was waiting for the audience. I just Wait. felt like they. Oh, it was laughing. Got, here's the thing. This is, and I know y'all are getting hype as I'm telling y'all this, but we gotta. I got to finish this. We got to go back to the beginning. I'm just getting y'all through the story. Oh, oh, okay. We got to oh, talk I'm about the about entire that. thing. All right. So after uh, after Barry finds Batman, Batman helps him track down Car. I mean, uh, Superman, which ends up being Kara zor -El. They free Kara zor -El. She gets into the sunlight. And as you guys know, Kryptonians feed off of our yellow sun. That's how they get their powers. If there is no yellow sun around, they don't have any powers. They're just as useless as human beings. She gets her powers. She is now the only force that we have to fight against Zod. All right. Zod in this timeline is about to attack because this is what happened when Barry was 18. Superman was on this planet to stop Zod and his army. But now because there is no Superman, his only hope is Kara. And now Kara is nowhere near ready to fight Zod. And what ends up happening in this final battle is we see young Barry. We see older Barry. We see Batman and Supergirl taking on Zod and his army. In this battle, without going into too much, Batman and Supergirl die in battle. The only two people left standing are young Barry and older Barry. Now, because of this, young Barry says, man, I wish we could go back in time. Barry's like, well, we can, but you're too slow. And he's like, am I? Start <laughs> running into the speed force. They both go back in time and try to change the scenario that just happened. Within them trying to change the scenario that just happened, they end up realizing that no matter what, this is an ev inevitable point, which they are both supposed to die in this timeline because this universe is supposed to not be existent. In them seeing this, young Flash, 18-year-old Flash, cannot accept this and wants to continue going back to stop any of this from happening because he feels as long as he goes back in time, he can change it. And he has all the time in the world to be able to do so. Every time he goes back in time, he has a different spike going through his body. This is the speed force punishing him for trying to change the timeline. And again, every time you try and change the timeline, you're ripping a hole in some universe. Because of this, they start, which we're not going to talk about right now. I'm just telling you the movie. The different universes start collapsing on top of themselves. You'll see Earth 3 collapsing with Earth 31 and so on and so forth. Because of these universes collapsing and every time 18-year-old Flash comes back, he has a different spike through his body. Older Flash is standing there realizing the era of his ways. 
man, I keep going back in time to try and change things, but I keep making them worse. The only way to fix this timeline is to stop the villain that knocked me out of the time bubble in the first place and come to find out that the villain that has been going back in time that knocked him out into the timeline to give young Barry his powers in the first place was Savitar which Savitar is an older version of Barry Allen that messes with the timeline so much that he becomes an evil warped old version of himself that is intent on fixing his problems from past universes. I'm sorry, from past timelines. And because he's done this, the only way that this can stop is if Savitar dies. Savitar feels that the only way that he can truly succeed is by killing original Barry, which is older Barry. Instead of killing original Barry, he ends up killing his younger self, which now he ceases to exist. By him ceasing to exist, the other universes are now fixed, solved, and clear. And young Flash, elder Flash realizes that he has to go back in time and he has to make sure that his own mother dies so that the timeline is intact. So he goes back in time and instead of changing the fact that his mother dies and, and uh, by giving the extra can of tomato sauce, he moves the tomato sauces to another shelf so that 20 years in the future, when his father goes to prison, that the video is revealed that he was actually there and he has an alibi for not killing his mother. This fixes every single thing in the timeline. It goes back to present day and Barry now gets the chance to see his father free from prison. And now he is greeted by a different Bruce Wayne. It is not Michael Keaton. It is not Ben Affleck. It is, in fact, George Clooney. <laughs> as Bruce Wayne in the movie ends. Now, before we start talking, there were two alternate endings. The first alternate ending was supposed to be the entire Justice League with the exception of Cyborg because he agreed not to do this movie. Everybody in the courthouse and it was supposed to set up Wonder Woman 3 and it was supposed to set up Man of Steel 3. I'm sorry, Man of Steel 2, which was going to feature Car Zor-El, Superman's uh, younger cousin. The second version was the version that we saw. And the third version was supposed to be Michael Keaton and Supergirl, which was going to set up Michael Keaton being in Batgirl, the Batgirl TV show that was later shelved. So that's why that didn't happen. So the ending that we saw was supposed to be setting up uh, George Clooney as the new Batman, even though we know that that is where the Snyderverse ends and that will not be Batman from the Brave and the Bold. Man, you come straight out of a comic. 